there's something very special about a performance car. That great feeling as your neck slap back into the headrest as you hit the loud pedal. The knowledge that a lot of thought has been put into designing and building your chosen car. But above all, the best feeling is actually owning one. We all have our favourites and recent new products being this icon has been added to a lot more lists. This was the car Aston Martin hoped would carry its banner into new territory, new markets and, most importantly, new levels of profitability. Since Aston became part of Ford's premier auto group, the omens had been nothing but good and the revival of what was once England's most traditional handmade mark under a completely new manufacturing ethos was nothing short of spectacularly successful. But to take it to the next level, Aston Martin had to take on the most successful and profitable sports car maker in the world. And tackle its legendary anachronism, the 911, head-on, on level terms, on its own turf. Powered by a lightweight V8 that's mounted behind the front axle line, the Vantage is a front mid-engine car in the way that the 911 is a rear-engine car full stop. It took Porsche 40 years to refine it to what it is today, and Aston Martin had just two years to match it, but they had the laws of physics on their side. The front end is about the same dimension as the DB9, but the smaller engine is situated as far back as it'll go, so the nose is light and has plenty of room for its deformable crash structures. After the A pillar, Aston's Vantage is well, small. Though its huge rear haunches make it look like a big, strong car, it is in fact a near mirror image of the 911 in wheelbase and length. And inside, of course, it has two seats in the front and some very attractive and expensive leather trim around what is essentially extra luggage space. Rear seat occupants need not apply. But you can't ignore the fact that this car has real menace in its every line. This isn't design with a capital D and some coffee table pictures. This is just firm lines, a clear understanding of what a car like this should look like, and no messing from workshop focus groups or corporate conservatives, inside or outside. That little V8 engine is blessed with 380 horsepower, a figure so close to that of the 911 that anyone would think it had been a target. It promises a road-going top speed of 175 miles an hour. Standstill to 60 takes less than five seconds, ditto 911 once again, of course. The only area where there's a big difference is price. The Aston costs quite a bit more than the Carrera S, 80 grand instead of 70.